Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Amen. Oh, it's so good to be in the house of the Lord. It's so good to be with brothers and sisters, believe me. The devil's been having a crack at our family this week, and uh, it's been a real, uh, real struggle, but we're here. We're here. And I just love that song that we were singing there in worship about, I went into his camp. Amen. He's under my feet. Amen. Is the devil under your feet? Yes. Because he yeah. should be. Yeah. Because we have the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. He that is in us is greater than he that's in this world. Yes. And we can do a lot of stomping. In Amen. That camp. We Amen. can get him. And Amen. as it says in the, uh, the book of Genesis, you know, we can create and bring about that faithful blow through Christ Jesus. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. It is good to know the Lord. Praise God. I've been on the other side, like a lot of you probably have too. And I'm not saying that I've been a devil worshipper or anything like that, but uh, I've been on the other side where I didn't know Jesus. Amen. But I tell you what, it's so good to know him. Amen. Because in these days, thanks, in these days, we need the Lord. We need the Lord in our lives. We need his, we need his light. We need his direction. We need his power. Yes. And more than anything, we need his love. Mm. Praise yes. the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, my message today has been inspired a little bit unbeknownst to, to him and the brother is here today, actually, by Brother Robert Campbell, uh, who's sitting here with us today. And he's been sending out these uh, uh, Bible uh, verses and some comments for quite well since I last saw him which was a couple of months ago now and uh, this sort of inspired me to uh, bring this message to you today in, with regards to crying out mm. we need to cry out to God Amen. and that doesn't mean say oh Lord help me that means Lord please yeah. help me yeah. I mean cry to him Mm. And if you are discouraged, cry even more. Yes. And Amen. continue to cry. Yes. Continue to cry out to him. Yes. Call on him. Yes. And he will deliver. Yes. yes. I think where we, as brothers and sisters, and certainly as human beings uh, in this world, we, we forget that God's timing is not always ours. And we need to endure sometimes. There is a yes. reason right. for our suffering. There is a reason for our times of... I guess you can almost say downheartedness. Mm -hmm. And there is a teaching that goes on there. And the Lord, he, he, he knows how much we can handle. Yes. Yes. Remember, he will stretch and stretch and stretch. Mm. But he won't break us. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And we need to make sure that we believe that. Yes, yes. As the Apostle Paul said, I am persuaded. When you look at that word, persuaded, it means he was totally convinced, totally convinced yes. in what Jesus had, not only for him, but for the world, what he had for each and every one of us. Yeah. On the day of Pentecost, Peter preached that the promise was to us and to all who are far off, mm. even as many as the Lord our God shall call Yes. The promises to all of us, saints, to all of us. Yes. Crying out is an important part of being a Christian. Yes. As a man, one can say, oh, no, grown men don't cry. Well, I've got news for you. I shed a lot of tears. Yes. Amen. I shed Thank tears the Lord. other day. I was shedding tears as I was worshipping the Lord there. And there is nothing wrong with you as a man shedding tears. That's yeah. right. God needs to see that broken and contrite heart so that he can come into you and dwell with you. Yes. He can come in and be one with you. And that is so important that we humble ourselves in the eyes, in the sight of God. Yes. Humble ourselves before him. Praise the Lord. If you could open your Bibles to Mark chapter 10. And we're going to speak about a man. He's mentioned quite a, well, not a lot in the Bible, but he gets referred to on quite a, uh, uh, on quite a few occasions. And it's blind Bartimaeus. And we're going to read from chapter 10, verse 46 through to 52. 
And they came to Jericho, this was Jesus and his disciples. And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. What does it say there? He began to cry out, yeah. Jesus, our son of David, the son of David, yeah. have mercy upon me. Yes, amen. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. And, but he cried the more a great deal, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou do that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith. Yes. That made thee whole. Yes. Lord. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Praise God. Amen. Yes. Praise God. He cried. Bartimaeus cried out. No, you be quiet, Bartimaeus. Sure, just be quiet. He's busy. There's a lot of people here with him, following him. Look, you've been blind for a long time. Just stay there, do your bit, beg as you normally do, but be quiet. Don't disturb him. What did Bartimaeus do? Go, no, all right, I'll be quiet. No, he kept crying out, Jesus, thou son of David, yes. have mercy upon me, on me, Bartimaeus. Yes. And he kept calling out and calling out. And what happened there? What happened was that a great work of God was done. A miracle was performed. But see what Jesus said to him. Bartimaeus firstly said, I would, need, I would have my sight. Lord, that I would have my sight. And what did Jesus say? What did he say? He said, go thy way. Thy faith yes. hath made thee whole. So not only did God, almighty God, give him back his sight, his faith, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, mm -hmm. made Bartimaeus whole. He wasn't just healed of his sight, he was healed spiritually. Praise Amen. God. Amen. And what did Bartimaeus do? Thank you very much, see you later. <laughs> he did not. Amen. He followed yes. in the way. Yes. He Lord. became Amen. a disciple Amen. of yeah. Jesus Christ. You, Even though the people who knew him in that town or in the areas around about Jericho knew him and knew what he was about, knew what Bartimaeus was about, Telling him to be quiet. Shush. Don't bother him. You just go about your business, what you're normally able to do. Don't make a scene. Jesus, help me. Yeah. I need your help. Yes. Praise yes. the Lord. Yes. And God not only Amen. healed him with his physical infliction, but he also filled his heart yes. full of his love. Mm. And his faith, as Jesus said, made him whole. Yes. Brothers and sisters, our faith is so important. <coughs> As I just said a minute ago, it's the substance, substance of things hoped for. It's what causes us to continue to hope. It's the evidence of things not yet seen. Yes. Because there's lots of things that we have to experience in this world, lots of things that we have trials, tribulations and joys that we have to experience and go through, that God... Uh, through our faith will reveal in good time. We need to stay believing. We have to believe and continue to believe as the Lord, the Lord works in our life. Yes. It's called unconditional belief. Mm. That's what true faith is about. It's yeah. unconditional. We seek after God Almighty unconditionally, just as Bartimaeus did. He put no conditions and no restrictions on Jesus Christ. He knew yes. that if God, Jesus standing there, would, 
would acknowledge who he is and what he is and where he is and call him over, he knew that God was going to do a mighty work. Yes. He believed it unconditionally, saints. Yes. That's the key to crying out, truly crying out to our God. Praise your name, Lord God. Praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. How bad do you want something? Yes. When you're praying to God, how bad do you want it? How much do you really want it? Yes. You pray to God, and one of my children just said the other day, I was praying, I was, I was doing all of that, but it didn't work. This is part of the attack that my wife and I have been going through over this last few days. I prayed, but it didn't work. How bad did they want it? Yes. How bad do you want your request? Yes. God hears everything from all of us. And he does not leave one page unturned, saints. Mm. He knows what we need. Yes, and Lord. sometimes we need to stretch a little more. Sometimes we need to want it badly. Mm. Even more badly. And that's bad English, I know. But we need to have, we need to want it so much that we do not stop crying yes. out, Lord, yes. Lord, please. Yes. And it may not necessarily be something that is, is, a, is a downside or a down affliction to us. It might be that you need to be able to achieve a certain goal in your working life or whatever it might be. But you keep praying for it, saints. Keep calling out, keep crying out and want it so badly that God will see. Remember, he will stretch and he will eventually, he will deliver. I know this from a personal, from a, from a personal experiences through my walk in Christ over these last 30 years now, I guess it is. And it is amazing. You know, you can be right over here in the opposite direction to where the Lord really wants you to be. But does he let you go? Does he cut you off? Does he say, well, that's it. You're over, brother Ron. I'm finished with you. You're done. Bye. Mm. See you later. You get over there. Do what you've got to do. Just be quiet. Don't bother me. Is that what the Lord does? No. no way. As my little grand says, not on your sweet pippy. <laughs> little five-year-old, that's what he says. He says, not on your sweet pippy pop. No way does God <laughs> turn his back on us. Very true. No way. He is always there. And he will always call back. Sometimes he lets us go and we have to really fall badly, skin our knees, knock a couple of teeth out in some cases. And maybe even a little bit more. But he will never turn his back on us. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Bartimaeus. Simple verses there. In that chapter of Mark. Bartimaeus knew these things. He had hope. Yes. And he had knowledge. And he had persuasion. He was fully persuaded that God was going to deliver his request. How long had Bartimaeus been asking the Lord in his prayers? How long had he been asking for his uh, blindness to be healed? Mm -hmm. Nobody knows. The scripture doesn't tell us that. But obviously Bartimaeus was well known to the people in his community and they knew that he was blind, they knew that he was a beggar and they just wanted him to be quiet. Just do what you always do, Bartimaeus. Stay there, be blind and do your thing. But don't bother anybody. Bartimaeus do something the Lord had shown him, obviously through his prayer and through his faith, that he was going to be healed by Jesus, our Almighty God, on that day. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise, Praise the Lord. Psalm thirty-four seventeen says, "The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth." Yes. The righteous. What is righteousness? It is doing what is right in the eyes of God. Yes. So the righteous cry. If you're doing what's right in the, in the eyes of God, why do I need to cry? Everything's good. I'm in a good place. I'm, I'm, I'm in a good place with God. I'm doing everything that's righteous. Everything's going fine. All the more reason to cry out to God. Amen? Yeah. All the more reason to cry out to Him and know that He will deliver. Praise the Lord. Yes. The righteous cry of the Lord heareth, it says in the psalm. 
and delivereth them out of all yes. their troubles. Amen. All their troubles. You know, yes. us human beings, we can be in trouble when we think things are going good. And actually, I know, again, from my personal experience, when things are going good, that's when you are. Next corner, there's trouble there. That's always the way. Life goes around in circles, my dear old mother used to say. And it does. And, you know, it's a cyclic thing. And when you're feeling really good, that's when you need to be a little bit more alert. Yes. Be more aware of the Lord Jesus. And be more aware where you are standing uh, in, in his kingdom. Because that is when you are vulnerable. When you're feeling really good, that's when we know the, the father of all lies, the prince of this world, the devil himself, Satan, Lucifer, whatever you want to call him, that's when he works because he's looking for that little chick. It's when you're feeling good, that's when you leave that little bit of armor off. When you're feeling good, you forget the helmet. Or you forget the breastplate of righteousness. Or you forget to gird yourself with the girdle of truth. These are the times that you need to be more aware, amen? Yes. And that's when we always need to be crying out to God. Have I got everything on, Lord? Lord, have I got everything? Is everything right? Am I right, Lord? And you need to be reassured by our Father. Amen. The ten lepers in the book of Luke, chapter 17, 11 to 19, if you want to look those scriptures up. But the ten lepers uh, call out to Jesus as well. They cried out, Lord, Jesus of Nazareth, son of David, help us. Ten of them. And he says, go on your way. I'm just paraphrasing here. Go on your way. And on their way, one of them noticed that his afflictions were gone. And that only, that one person, all ten were, were healed. But only one of the ten noticed and took time and went, oh my God. Thank you, Lord God. And what did he do? He went back. He went back. And Jesus said, but only one of you have come back. That one showed that his faith was ongoing. That one showed that not only was he again physically healed, he, was, he had a spiritual experience and he went back to be near his Father, near, be, be near his Almighty God. Again, they were crying out, but only one really knew what had happened to him. And took, and took notice of what was actually happening, happening to him. He was healed physically and his faith delivered him spiritually. Praise the Lord. Not only was he healed physically, but he was healed spiritually. He became whole in yes. Christ Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. We must come to a point, saints, that we know that God will deliver. And the only way that we can do that is to continually cry out to him. We have to know. K-N-O-W, knowledge. We have to have that knowledge. We have to be, as the Apostle Paul said, fully persuaded, yes. fully convinced that we are going to be delivered. Otherwise, if we don't know that, then what are we trying to do? What are we trying to prove to ourselves or anybody else? Are we just going through the motions just for the sake of looking good to others around us? Are we just going through the emotions to please God? He knows better than that. Our omniscient God knows all about what our thoughts and our feelings are. And he knows if we are sincere or not. We have to get to that point where we know. Yes. We know yes. that he will deliver us. Praise the Lord. We talk about, in the scriptures, about Thomas, the apostle, one of the uh, original apostles that Jesus chose. Now, if you know the story about Thomas, he was faithful, he followed after the Lord, but when the Lord uh, died on the cross and then rose again in three days, Thomas wouldn't believe. He wouldn't believe that Jesus had risen. So everything that the law was telling them, and we know this, that the disciples in those days didn't understand. They never really got the gist of things until after the day of Pentecost. 
That was when the disciples realised what Jesus had been saying to them and teaching them all those times when he walked in his three, three odd years of, uh, of, of ministry. But Thomas wouldn't believe unless he saw the very nail holes in Jesus' hands. The very hole in his side where the soldiers pierced him. Thomas wouldn't believe. Where was Thomas' faith? It was obviously struggling. He was in a pretty devastated condition, as were all of the followers, because they saw their Lord die. They saw him die a pretty painful death. But Thomas still would not believe that he, our Lord, had risen. So my message today, saints, is that we don't have to see either to believe. <laughs> Father Maius physically was blind. He couldn't see. He couldn't see anything. But he believed in Jesus Christ. Amen? Yes. He believed and knew that Jesus could deliver. Yes. We do not have to believe. We as faithful saints, those that are exercising our faith to the fullest, should be able to call out to the Lord all the more, yes. even without seeing. Yes. Praise yes. God. Glory. Even if we are being discouraged. And boy, don't we get that. Mm -hmm. Anybody here... Put their hand up and say they've never been discouraged about their walk with the Lord. We can't do it, can we? Because we've all been discouraged one way or another, at some time or other. But that is all the more reason, brothers and sisters, that we need to cry out to Jesus. Amen. Cry out to him and ask him to bring me forth. Bring me forth, Lord, and make me whole. Praise the Lord. Bartimaeus couldn't see. We do not need to see. Thomas didn't need to see. But Jesus understood Thomas's doubts. He understood his, his, uh, his concerns. And Jesus said, look at me. Here I am. And what did Thomas do? He instantly believed. But we don't need to see those nail holes, saints. We don't need to, we don't need to uh, thrust our hand into Jesus' side. All we need to do is a call to him, cry out to him, and partake of that gift of the Holy Ghost that he has given us. Because the time is coming when the Holy Ghost is going to be gone. Mm -hmm. The time is coming that the Holy Ghost will no longer be freely available to all who seek. To all who cry out. They're still going to want to come to know Jesus, but the Holy Ghost will not be here. Mm -hmm. Because we know that the scriptures tell us that that dispensation is drawing to an end. It is never hopeless. Nothing is hopeless when we know the Lord. Amen. Yes. Nothing is hopeless, saints. That is our faith, and that is the measure of our faith. Yes. If our faith is strong and it is healthy and it continue, we continue to walk in faith, then there is nothing, no such thing as hopelessness. Mm -hmm. No one is hopeless in Christ Jesus. Yes. Yes. As I said before, we need to be totally persuaded, totally convinced, praise the Lord. Praise, praise his mighty name. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory. Psalm 56 9 says, and we used to sing this song years ago. Just to be honest, the Psalms are quite often songs composed by King David, and he struggled. Boy, did he struggle. King David, you know, he did some of his, uh, his Psalms are the greatest uh, crying out to God that you will ever hear. And uh, this psalm in 56 9 says, When I cry unto thee, then shall mine enemies turn back. This I know, for God is for me. God is for me. Mm. Praise God. When I cry unto thee, O Lord, then shall mine enemies turn back. When I cry unto thee, <laughs> not when I call out unto thee, not when I speak unto thee, not when I pray unto thee. Not when I bow unto thee, mm. not when I walk unto thee, when I cry. When I actually emote my desire to have you in my life, Lord God. Mm. Brothers and sisters, we need to shed tears. Mm. And we need to shed tears for our Lord to call him back. And he will have our enemies turn back. We know that he will always be the victor over Satan because Satan yes. knows that himself. Yes. Satan knows it better than any of us that he has already lost the battle. Amen. But hey, we are still in a fight. And that fight is for us to continually 
fall on the Lord. You know, with the Lord there are no half measures. You're either for him or you're against him. You're either on this side of the fence or you're on that side of the fence. You can't have one leg either way. The Lord will not accept that. He says, you're either for me or against me. Because we know God will give us his all. Yes. Even though there are times when we don't think that he is. Remember, it's in his timing. He knows when we need everything that we feel that we should have. He knows when we need that. Just as Bartimaeus kept calling out. I believe that Bartimaeus not only prayed to Jesus on that day. He, believed that he would have heard that Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth was coming. He would have heard. And I believe that Bartimaeus was praying well before Jesus passed him by on that road. I believe that Nazareth was a faithful man who knew that there was only one who could help him with his affliction. And I believe that is why Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. I'm not just going to give you your sight. I'm going to make you whole as a God-fearing, God-believing, God-persuaded person, praise the Lord. He might cry, O Lord, attend unto my prayer. Psalm 61. He might cry, O Lord, attend unto my prayer. Praise the Lord. He might cry, O Lord, attend unto my prayer. Praise God. Jesus of Nazareth, thou son of David, yes. make me whole. Yes. Hear me cry. Watch me cry, Lord. And you have your way. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Praise the Lord.